just the finishing touches right now. Then we're gonna bleed the brakes, get her on the ground, and crank her. Boy, does it look good. Yeah, it's a work of freaking art. It's the nicest trailer queen ever. And not wait to see it in the sunlight. So close. Won't be long now. There she is. Hcraft Customs Chassis 002. H spent the better part of three and a half months building this for us. And now I'm going to give you a walkthrough and let you see exactly what he did. The incredible amount of detail that's in this. So for those of you that don't know, this is a tube chassis built on a 106 inch wheelbase. It was built using a 2018 Turbo S as a donor. There's 35 inch Rockzilla stickies on System 3 SB4 6 plus 1 offset wheels. We're using H-Craft Customs lower A-arms. We're using L&W Fab upper A-arms, RCV axles. It has uh, a lot of nice details in it. Those fang lights are Turbo S fangs. I'm gonna show you how they work in a second as turn signals. It's got a worn Axios 5,000, or Axion 5,000 pound winch. It's um, stock springs and, or stock shocks and valving using razor aid tender springs. The PRP seats are what were in my buggy before. Does have Hess Power Sports intercooler and radiator update. We're running a Aftermarket Assassin's Stage 1 tune, because I just don't need any more power than that. Aftermarket Assassin's full exhaust, blow-off valves, charge tubes, their clutch kit with a high-load helix in the secondary for these bigger, heavier tires. Those tires on those wheels, mounted and aired up, weigh 70 pounds a corner. So it's a significant amount of uh, rotating weight we've got there. ZRP radius rods. ZRP D-ring pull plate, H-Craft Customs trailing arms. Look at the trailing arms, how much clearance I have. They're basically even with the frame rail, the way that H does this. Because he mounts them on the outside, then they swoop back down, I've got just an insane amount of clearance. We went with a cement gray colored uh, powder coat for the panels and it's using Illusion Royale as the powder for the tubes. We went with a, a uh, high gloss white for the roof. There's going to be an American flag wrap uh, put on that here shortly. And in a nice twist, this machine has almost the entire stock Turbo S interior dash, seat mounts, the whole nine yards. It works out really good, really comfortable, and very refined. Still got the Turbo S scoop put on it. And there's, there's hiding a little something in there. I'm gonna show that to you in just a second. So uh, I did not like the suicide doors. So I told H, man, I really don't wanna climb in and out of this thing like Ryan and Brian do and Jessica. I'm almost 50 years old, dude. I need to be able to open doors. So he gave me doors and they open like a tr traditional car door he's gone ahead and mounted for me polaris razor door bags so i've got some additional storage and when he created the floor for me it's all good uh, heavy gauge aluminum that he is uh covered with a bed liner material looks really nice in there and I said, you know, we got 106 inches. I'd really like some storage behind the seats. And man, did he deliver. I've got an extended cab tube chassis. That opens up, it's held in place with a magnet there. And right through here, I can get to a dry bag. 
My cooler's right there. It's real easy to get in and out of the cooler, which is handy. Air filter is back in there, very easy to change. There's a toolbox or a tool bag that's strapped in there and a custom uh, enclosure he built for that. It's just a, a beautiful, beautiful machine. It's been built just, there's so much attention to detail here, I can't even tell you. And having the, using the factory seat bases makes it very easy to use the, the aftermarket seats. Um, I did want to change it up a little from a dash perspective. So I went with the CD7 dash by uh, AEM. So turn that on here. Little Southern Land Riders. There's my new dash. Uh, it still has the uh, 2018 version of Ride Command. Um, I've still got to get a couple of blanks to go inside some of those holes that we're not using because we upgraded to a Switch Pro's switch down here uh, to manage a lot of the stuff. And again, just insane attention to detail. He has built me a, a custom fabricated tunnel that comes in and out very easy with just a few screws. And uh, if you'll notice, while we were uh, waiting for this to be built, Ruth rode with him quite a bit. And as Ruth was riding with him, he noticed that she always put one foot on top of another on the dead pedals. So he built her a custom dead pedal that both of her feet will go on and it's adjustable. <laughs> I can pull those pins up and move it back and forth depending on the size of the rider in the passenger seat. Just, you don't see this kind of stuff in a run of the mill tube chassis. This is a custom trail machine. No ifs, ands, or buts. And yes, um, we've still got the extended cab over here. And there you can see there's, the, there's that little rack he made to put my toolbox in. There's the fuel fill. I told him it's got a 50, uh, 47 percent gear reduction. So I'd really like to make sure that uh, I don't have any challenges uh, on fuel when we're in Moab. Some of our days are over 100 miles long. So he's given me two seven and a half gallon saddle tanks that are bridged together. So I got 15 gallons of gasoline on board. That really helps with that. Those are OEM replacement Jeep headlights. That makes it look really aggressive. It's a nice touch too. And for more storage, uh, he's just given me a boot, as they say in the UK. So right there, where there was dead space, he has created, get this, it's on there with some pretty good felt, another area for tools, spare parts, tool kit, wrenches, uh, the um, plugs for tires, whatever. And then this thing just comes out. If I got to do maintenance on the, on the shock therapy steering rack, I can simply pull out these four bolts. This whole trunk comes right out and gives me straight access to the shock therapy rack that's underneath there. My battery is right here. And then much like Ryan's machine, when you want to change the diff, you just pull those bolts out there. There's four bolts. This panel comes off. You take off the bolts that are holding the diff in and the front diff just slides right out the front, which is so handy uh, in the event that we have a failure when we're out there. <laughs> now, I am using a Sandcraft custom length prop shaft for 106 inch wheelbase. Uh, they were very good to deal with and I'll buy a spare from them because they're very, very good to work with. You can see what he did here for my street legal kit. He's made sure that the factory tail lights are still in place. And I've got my tag light. It's ready to roll, street legal, uh, good to run through downtown Moab or through, you know, the town that I live in in East Tennessee just as well. So all in all, just a magnificent, magnificent job. I'm super happy with it. It came out really well. Um, I did add a Hess uh, steering wheel because I wanted to have a nice bigger steering wheel there. Um, those of you that watched before, you know I did have an e-power steering kit in there. That wasn't working with Ride Command, so I talked to Matt Buxton, and he was able to give uh, to sell me um, a very uh, nice replacement uh, Turbo S power steering unit that came out of one of his race buggies. Only had 200 miles on it. We stuck that in there, and it's it's great. Now I've got Ride Command again. You know, the steering wheel input is, is all there. Um, pretty good to go here. It's, it's just a, a really, really solid build, and I can't wait to break it in. It's going to happen pretty quick here. We're going to go to thinking uh, Hawk Pride, uh, August 5th, 6th, and 7th for the SRS event. And uh, this machine's going to be there, and we'll be 
really putting it to the test. I'm excited about it. I'm glad to be back in it. It's a shame it's so beautiful because I'm sure I'm gonna put it on its lid in a short order. I'm gonna try not to, I really am. But, uh, oh, I wanted to show you the, the turn signals. So um, again, that's a, that's a Corbin Customs straight legal kit that H put in there. Just so, so nice. It really, really looks good. I don't have to worry about damaging it because it's so far off the, off the wheels. And uh, we're in a pretty good spot. So all in all, great, great, great machine. I really like it. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that he was willing to do it for me. Uh, if you want something like this, they aren't free. You know, he has, uh, I think he told me 330 hours of labor in this. It's a lot of work to, to strip one down, uh, to build the chassis, then to get it functional, make sure everything's right before he, he strips it all down, sends it off to powder coat, comes back, puts it all back together. He spent four full days assembling it before I got there on Saturday. Then I spent an additional 19 hours with him uh, finishing up the build, getting it ready to go home. Um, just a, a great, great amount of work. Um, it's it's worth every penny. Uh, you will pay for this. This is, this is not a $10,000 tube chassis. And it's, it's easily gonna cost three times that plus your donor, but you're getting something that is really, really custom and going to last. It's not just thrown together. Uh, this is my, uh, basically a custom design. I liked Clayton Wilson's War Pig. I gave H a picture of War Pig and said, I really like this styling. It doesn't need to look exactly like War Pig, but I would really like uh, to use that as a guide. And, and that's what he did. And it looks just fantastic. Um, overall length's 141 inches, so it'll fit in my toy hauler. It's got a 12 and a half foot garage, so we're in a pretty good spot there. And uh, man, it's just beautiful. I'm so glad that he did this for me. And uh, I can't wait to get out there and see what it'll do. Hope to see you on the trails. Thanks.